You are now tuned in to Go Time Dolphins with Charlie Touche and Kadeem Simmons, the Miami Dolphins podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. We don't really have a like a group or like we don't have a name for Go Time Dolphins fans, if that makes sense. Um, but I do want to shout out the Go Time Dolphins fans, Go Time Dolphin listeners, everyone who commented on the last video. We always appreciate it. Everyone who commented first, you know, that was a, I can't even say it was an in or a private joke. Anyone who heard the episode to the very end knows why we said comment first. Um, so appreciate those people. Thank you very much. Um, we will discuss why we had that later on. You know, can't give people everything at the top of the show. You know, leave people to or leave something remaining until the end of the show. But as always, before we delve into things, Thanks for, you no know, click and play on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast from. If you've clicked play, very quickly press pause or, you know, comment, subscribe, share it. You know, the more, the more you guys, you know, spread the love, the bigger we grow. I don't think and, they gotta press pause to do it though. They, like, I think they could just subscribe turn on notifications and listen to us at the same time i think you, you're not giving them enough credit well i, I can't that's what i said share if you're sharing it and you're watching on youtube you've got to go to a different website so you probably want to pause it so you don't miss you know charlie might might do something or i might do something you know if, if, you, if you're listening on a, pod, a podcast yeah you don't need to pause it but you know if you're not listening on the podcast then you know pause it anyway you, that that voice you heard was Mitchell Charlie Touche. He was back the last episode. He's back again. How are you? Well, you, you said that like I'm a guest. Oh, you're back again, like bro. You 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 ever seen a Bernie Mac show? Yeah, that that did make that did make it over here to the UK. Bro, Bernie Mac show. There was a Bernie the episode where Vanessa and I forgot what the 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 the, the kid's name was. The the son, um, the boy's name was. But the daughter was named Vanessa. And for those unfamiliar with the Bernie Mac show, Bernie Mac was, um, I want to say an uncle. And he took in his nephew and his niece, um, his sister's kids, I think. And so they lived with him. So it wasn't like the show was his kids. It was like, yeah, I took y'all in, you know what I'm saying? My sister going through some stuff. And that's what the, the show was based around. So the kids live with him. And... One episode, the cops came to the door, and Bernie Mac is just like having a confessional, like, "Man, these kids, boy, I don't know about these kids." And then, so the cops come to the door, and Vanessa answers the door, and they're they're like probably ten and thirteen at the time, I think. Vanessa answers the door, and she's talking to the police officer by herself, and the cops like, "Hi." You know, we we got a call here and this is going on, so on and so forth. We heard a we got a report of X, Y, and Z. Bernie Mac comes to the door some minutes later, and the cop and he 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 comes to the door and Bernie Mac says, Hey, how how can I help you, officer? And then the officer talks to Vanessa and says, Does he live here? <laughs> and, <laughs> and Vanessa says, yeah, he stays here. <laughs> <laughs> and, Bernie, and Bernie Mac, it cuts to the confessional, and Bernie Mac says, I stay here. I stay here. I live here. You stay here. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I just got just now. Kadeem, like, oh, he's back again. Like, bro, I'm back again? Like, I'm just back again? That's it? Because I could have swore I was, like, half of the podcast. Listen, 
It's Go Time Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins podcast. That not, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm saving it. I'm telling you now, yeah. The live show, the you intro is mine. Not. Season four live show, the intro is mine. I've been, I've been practicing in the shower, practicing while I'm working. I am telling you now, I'm going to have it on lock for the live show. Listen, the first show of the new league season, season four of Go Time Dolphins, I am doing the intro. Be there for that alone. There's going to be a drum roll. There's going to be like a ribbon cutting ceremony. I am doing the intro. Just you wait. Kadeen, you just tried your hardest. Just now, I heard it. You just tried. You really did try. Hey, you couldn't do it, boy. No, like, but again, why don't I give it away now when I can, when like the live show, like that's the thing. Tune in for the live show to hear Kadeem nail the intro. Get it to perfect <laughs> That is why you joined the live show for the intro. I'm telling you now. Oh, woo. It's Go Time Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond, but across the world. I'm your boy, Charlie Touche. I got my co-host, Kadeem Simmons, with me. It's always for the fans and by the fans. Your favorite podcast, favorite podcast. And Kadeem really, really tried to get through that. And he, he, yeah, it's funny. But hey, credit to you, Kadeem. You're all right with me, boss. Before we, before we give out more credit, just want to show you my new Jamaica shirt. It's kind of like a ripoff of your Ajax shirt. Um, somehow the Ajax, there we go. The Ajax shirt is more Jamaican than the Jamaica shirt. And I don't understand why. But, it is how it is. Um, yeah. Shout out to Jamaica. Shout out to Bob Marley. Shout out to Ajax. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd wear the Jamaica shirt today as it was clean and why not? So, so just just for clarification for our audio listeners, we just we just showed my uh, Ajax jersey. Uh, it's a, the top to the kit. Y'all call it right? A kit. Yeah. So so Kadeem has his new. What is that? Jamaica's. Because it don't look Jamaica at all. That that's the thing. Like that's to say, the Ajax shirt looks more Jamaica than the than the Jamaica shirt. If it wasn't for the Jamaica like badge, mm-hmm. there's nothing about it that says Jamaica. Like the yellow isn't really yellow. The green and the red, like it, it makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. Hey, so let's get into it. Vic Fangio was announced officially by Coach McDaniel. Uh, they had a conference, and Coach McDaniel comes to the podium and says, uh, pra- paraphrasing here, I can't wait to, to coach with this man on, on, the, on the same field and, and go to battle with this man. And Vic Fangio comes to the podium and says, you know what, I don't have anything prepared. Just ask questions. Let's go from there. What did you take from the conference, Kadeem? Oh, I, t- I took a load. Um, I took that he hasn't been... Okay, so not to... Not to tie the same brush as when Changeli, you know, returned from a sabbatical to the Miami Dolphins. Changeli, if I believe, if I was correct, was essentially fishing while he wasn't working, if that makes sense. Whereas Vic Fangio was like, I've been, you know, studying tape, watching games. I've been, you know, designing new coverages, new schemes and stuff like that. So I, from his press conference that he's been ready to work, just needed the right fit. The right fit looks like it's in Miami. And like he said, he's not here for a short term. He's here for, you know, the next 10 years, next 10 years, it's the Dolphins won him. So this is a guy who has been preparing to come back to the NFL and essentially make his mark. And, you know, this mark will be with the Miami Dolphins. My dog, my dog, internet going through it again, but we're going to, we're going to power power through it. For some reason, it's only when we record, could even has a problem with the internet. Um, So what I heard Vic Fangio say, in not so many words was, I'm not here for a good time. I'm here for a long time. 
you know, they did. It's kind of switched up. They, they said backwards nowadays. <laughs> so he did say, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to be here 10 years if they'll have me. That's exactly what he said. He said, I, I'm trying to coach another 10 years if, if, if the Dolphins will have me here. Um, what I caught was him saying, we have a good nucleus of players here. And he mentioned some on the, like, he called, singled some players out, like, Javon Holland was the first one he mentioned. Jalen Phillips was the second person he mentioned. And Kristen Wilkins was the third person he mentioned. And if you just want my opinion, Wilkins is staying here for a long time. I know we had the conversation of which one do we sign and who do we move on from. Kristen Wilkins ain't going nowhere. Friend of the podcast, Javon Holland is, is locked in and – I think everyone expects a, a, a huge season from him, uh, including us on, on GTD. Shout out to Javon Holland. Uh, when 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 do we have him on the podcast? Kadeem, is it is it the anniversary coming up soon? Honestly, I think I think we missed it. I will nah. double check. But uh, Javon Holland. So while while Kadeem tries to find it. The anniversary of, of Javon Holland being on the episode, we might have to celebrate that. Uh, on, the, on the podcast, we might have to celebrate that. So, anyway, uh, he mentioned Javon Holland, mentioned Jalen Phillips, and he mentioned Christian Wilkins. It's not always a good nucleus of players. This was the first assignment that Vic Fangio took after a year off of coaching. So, he went into detail about a little detail about what the the consultant job was in Philly. And it wasn't like he had to be at the facility all the time. He didn't have to wake up. He had banker hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I come in when I want for a couple hours and just talk about what's going on. So he was really more, more in the building when the NFC came, NFC championship came up and when the, and the Super Bowl came up. So all the consultant talk, it wasn't like he really had a, a locked in job there. And I had to, he had the right X's and O's for, for the D.C. there. My thing is, he did mention, and this is within like the first two minutes of him talking. He said, uh, you know, it's the first job I took and after taking a year off. Uh, it's a good nucleus of players and the allure of South Florida. Like, bro, listen, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now, yeah? Kadeem Simmons' voice. Everyone who comes to, to the Miami Dolphins has has had South Florida weighed in on their decision. For sure. Believe it. So to hear uh Coach Fangio say it like, yeah, man, like it's, it's South Florida. Like, who doesn't want to be in South Florida? I just need people to understand that we want a championship while you're living in South Florida. Like sometimes players just be like, oh, I'm going to Miami. I'ma go get the, I'ma go get the Chevy the old school and I'm going to go blend in with the locals. Nah, bro. I told you my Dante Culpepper story. You know what I'm saying? Dante Culpepper came down, got himself like a 72 Chevy Caprice. We call those dunks in South Florida. He was sitting on the side of the road. It was broken down. And I promise you, if he was doing good, we would have helped him out. But he wasn't. So we didn't. Like, nah, bro. Like, you acting, bro. You just came out here just to say you was down here. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. Did you find out the date uh, Javon Holland came on to the podcast? January 26th. It was in January? It was in January. Damn, it's been over a year? Over a year. And I think January 26th, I was either at the end or flying back from my Caribbean cruise. So I wasn't even in the country to celebrate the Javon Holland episode or um, anniversary. So... Yeah, we gotta we gotta put that out. We're gonna we're gonna put out an anniversary episode to friend of the podcast, Javon Holland coming on Go Time Dolphins. We're gonna put that out pretty soon. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Fangio. He. If if, if you haven't seen our last episode, or it yeah, it was our, our last episode with Kevin Dern from Dolphin Talk Weekly. He dropped a subtle exclusive which didn't go unnoticed on um, by me anyway, and he said he'd been told that. The Christian walk walking extension is a matter of when, not if. Um, and hearing Fangio talk about Wilkins, you know, like you said, Jalen Phillips, friend of the podcast, Javon Holland, 
it's like, yeah, these are the guys who are, you know, the defense is going to, to be built around. Um, you know, captains, guys who guys who any success the Dolphins have over the next, you know, 10 to 15 years will be based around how they play. And um, you know, when he also said that, you know, certain if if, if possible, certain players will be on the field, you know, every snap. But obviously, due to fatigue and stuff like that, that's not possible. I don't think we'll see many downs where, you know, those three aren't on the field. I think it will be like a, you'll be looking at, hold on, where's so-and-so? Because, you know, every down, where possible, every situation, those three guys can generally make a game-changing play. So why would they be on the sideline for? So, yeah, Wilkins will get his extension. Um... And it's a matter of one thing I find interesting about what he said is obviously he will have an idea of what he wants to do, but the scheme will be based around what the players can do. And it, it was not a case of him coming and saying, Hey, we're running this, so everyone needs to adjust this. Hey, we're going to run this. If you guys can't run it, we'll find a way to get the best out of everyone. So I find that really interesting. And I think before I pass it back to you, like a lot of people, correctly assumed this isn't going to be a blitz happy defense i think his phrase was we'll blitz when we want to not because we have to and i think it's i don't think that's a shot at the previous defensive coordinators but it's a situation where you know this defense wants to be a defense where you know they can get plenty of pressure from four don't need to send seven eight because you know it kind of leaves you vulnerable in other areas. So Kevin Dern came on, shout out to Kevin Dern, go follow him if you aren't already. Um, He came on and said, you know, Fanjo loves his nickel defense, you know, four four defensive linemen, two linebackers, and then, you know, five DBs. And probably we'll see a lot of that. So Phillips, Walkin, Sealer, and um, Bradley Chubb, you guys go find the quarterback. The rest of you guys, you know, stop, stop the quarterback from making quick early throws. Yeah. So when he was saying what you were, what you just alluded to, Kadeem, was every team that he coached is different. And basically, if, if, if we have a certain type of player or players on this team, we'll call the game that type of way. And it's, in essence, the same thing on the offensive side of the ball. You're not going to call just like Brian Dayball. He had Danny Nichols in, in, in New York. He was able to call some quarterback sweeps because he coached Josh Allen. Do you think we would have seen quarterback sweeps if he was coaching Tua? Probably probably not. So it's the same thing with, with Fangio coming in on the defensive side of the ball. You cater it. Yeah, we have the scheme but you still cater it to who you have available as players on your team. So he, he did say sometimes we might call, we, we did call more blitzes and sometimes we didn't, but it, it all depends on what the team looks like. What's up? Very quickly, because I wanted to make this point and I forgot. And then what you said reminded me, I do think it's part of the reason why Josh Boyer is no longer here. You know, last season when we had all those injuries, but we're still calling cover zero blitzes and you don't have, you know, there was some, there were some points and it was very, very few and far between, but there were some points when our entire start and secondary from the previous year weren't on the field, and we're calling cover zero blitzes and expecting, you know, guys to try and hold up. It's like this makes no sense. And I think Fangio saying that this scheme will be dependent or the scheme will run based on who we have available and who we have in the building is very much a case of we will try something if three or four key players go down, we have to switch it up because we can't expect the same results when the level of talent drops. We're not going to go to something completely different, but we will, you know, we aren't going to do stupid, essentially we aren't going to do stupid things simply because I'm going to be stubborn and be like, this has to work with these players because that's not how the NFL works. So I think something that, I don't know if the word is shocked a lot of people, but something that, let's say, it may be not a shock or a surprise, but something that Coach Fangio said that I'm pretty sure a lot of people did not know and assumed otherwise was that Coach McDrip, Mike McDaniel, 
and Fangio didn't have a pre-existing relationship. And for a long time, everyone thought that, oh, McDaniel wanted Fangio, but the Dolphins made McDaniel keep Boyer. And McDaniel's, you know, McDaniel wanted to go Fangio last season because of a existing relationship there. And or at least that's what it seemed. And that's what was being reported. Or that's just it's just it came out like that. Turns out Fangio comes up on the podium, says, no, nah, I don't know, dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, nah, man. <laughs> like, like, no, nah, but bro, coach, coach, bro, coach really did say he said, uh, I don't know him. We didn't have a pre existing relationship. I just knew him from football circles. I, I, I see him from a distance, from afar. I, I respect him as a coach. I like what he's doing. I like what he brings to the table. Um, we may have talked once or twice in passing at like a combine or something, but we don't know each other. Is is exactly what he said. What what did you make of that, Kadeem? I wasn't shocked, but I think it's one. I I think you explained it perfectly in that there was this narrative. Which now that you think about it, I don't know where it came from. I don't think anyone can pinpoint where this narrative that McDaniel and Fangio were like friends and spoke a lot, or you know anything like that. Yes, we knew that McDaniel wanted wanted Fangio. And I think people put two and two together and got like 79.834. Like it makes zero sense. Or it, not, not that it makes zero sense, but people kind of ran with this narrative, which wasn't really true. So, yeah, like I said, I wasn't surprised. But if anything, it makes sense that, you know, like, like McDaniel said when he first came up on the podium, he was like, Banjo's been coaching in Jennifer for longer, longer than I've been alive. <laughs> like... And, you know, McDaniel is essentially a first-time head coach and, you know, is kind of in that San Francisco bubble. Now, because Carl Shanahan might know Fangio, doesn't mean that McDaniel knows Fangio. McDaniel wanted Fangio because, you know, Vic Fangio is an excellent defensive coordinator. Had nothing to do with trying to bring his friends into the building. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad he cleared up. found that quite interesting. Um, and, you know, he even said... I think they only met for the first time a couple of days ago because McDaniel was on holiday when they had the interview. So it's like they met, they spoke over Zoom, but in terms of actually meeting yeah. face to face, it was like, yo, this is essentially the first time. Like, I think it might have been the same day of the press conference. I think it was, uh, you know, we, we spoke over Zoom when it became official and we had a couple conversations over Zoom. McDaniel was on vacation and today, I seen him around the facility. That was the, I think that's what he said today. I seen him around the facility, and that was the first time they, you know, actually had. And they, I still, I don't think they still had real conversations. At the end of the end of the day, it's game recognized game. Like I know what I want as a head coach. I know what I want this te- defense to look like. I know what I want this team to look like. At least, um, I'm gonna do my part with the offense. Who can I help? Who can I bring in to help on the defensive side of the ball? There's a coach out there. I rock with coach. Like, you know what? I wonder if we could bring him in here. And McDaniel finally gets the coach of his uh uh the candy apple of his eye. And we're we're about to see what happens. Now, I do want to say this. I wasn't excited about Fangio. I'm still not excited about Fangio, but I do know football when when football is put right there in front of you i'm not saying this is bad i'm not saying fangio is is isn't what everyone's making them out to be i'm not saying that all i'm saying is i feel like we would have been we would have been okay without him like i don't think we would have brought in even if we kept boyer or brought in somebody else i don't think it would have been the the collapse of Rome, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh my goodness, the DC ruined our chances of a, of a Super Bowl. I don't believe that. Even if, again, with Boyer with healthy pieces, I still think we would have been solid. So, my thing is, yes, Fangio. I know uh, Aaron Casker came in and said, "Oh, it's the same Dolphin for y'all." I bet y'all excited now. All right, I ain't gonna lie. I can understand if they are excited now, but I'm not ex- as excited. It's like, ah. Uh, 
yo, we should be nice regardless. We should be nice anyway. All right. So how much do you credit coaching and how much do you credit the players? Because I could I could I could promise you this coaches can lose games for sure. 100 percent coaches, coaches can lose games. Um, but if you don't have the right players, then you can lose games too. So I think we have the players, and as long as we have the players, I think after battle is done, GI Joe. No one is what, what how, how did that how did that quote go on GI Joe? No one's oh, half the battle. I, uh, I, I I couldn't tell you. Oh, um, I, I guess y'all y'all don't y'all didn't have GI Joe. I think that was an American cartoon, obviously. So we had Action Man. Mm -hmm. that, that was kind of like our GI Joe version. But then obviously the movies with um Channing Tatum for a lot of people would be the first um exposure to G.I. Joe. I knew of G.I. Joe previously. I just hadn't I'd never watched a cartoon. Although there is a YouTube channel which shows G.I. Joe cartoons 24-7, which is quite fun to watch when you're whoa, 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 whoa. Throwback G.I. Joe cartoons? Throwback G.I. Joe. Oh, it's a wrap. I need that. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I, I was I was big on, on G.I. Joe growing up, bro. Matter of fact, it was now you know and no one's half the battle. G.I. Joe. That's that's how I went. Yo, I need that, bro. I need that link. Shoot me the link. I'll try and find it if it's still running because sometimes these things get taken down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all had Radiant Rainbow? Who, sorry? <laughs> no, 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 seriously. I, I no, 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 no. I, as I'm saying it, I'm like, there's no way y'all had this. This all has to be American stuff. Reading Rainbow. Definitely not. Y'all didn't have Radiant Rainbow. Hold on. Was that this kind of like was it a puppet? Nah. Oh, I don't think there's puppets in Reading Rainbow. Nah. Yeah, I don't think there are puppets in Reading Rainbow. Oh, you hold know on. the dude. Do you know what? I no, I never saw it, but I know who the guy is, Lavar Burton. I know who he is. Do you know he's from Reading Rainbow? Oh, he was in Star Trek, wasn't he? I believe so. I know I know him from stuff. But no, I have no we, we we definitely didn't get reading reading Rainbow. And especially given the year it was on, I wasn't even born yet. So yeah. Take a look. It's in the book. It's reading rainbow. Let All us right. know in the comments below whether you watch Reading Rainbow. Um or or G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe reading Rainbow. What Bro, this is one once when you said reading Rainbow, I knew they were gonna they was gonna show up for reading Rainbow. When you added G.I. Joe, one hundred percent of the comments are gonna one hundred percent is gonna be reading rainbow or G.I. Joe without a doubt, bro. Without a doubt. Um you mentioned you weren't excited about oh not that like you weren't excited about the fan joe hire but you know you said what you said on a previous episode you spoke about the voice notes we would send each other essentially like go time dolphins before it was go time dolphins and i remember vividly a conversation we had about it must have been around the chan gailey hire and kind of saying at, on top of hiring chan gailey the Dolphins need to hire someone younger to take over from when Chang Gailey essentially goes. The Dolphins bring in Vic Fangio, but also, I don't know if there's any other way to put it, still the LA Chargers defensive coordinator in, Ronald, is it Ronaldo Hill? Ronaldo Hill. Ronaldo Hill. Now, I didn't know Ronaldo Hill was a former Miami Dolphin. I, I say that I know Charlie would be like, of course, Charlie could probably tell me how many games he played, what college he went to, and his number. All right, I'm gonna be real with you. I probably can't tell you how many games he played. Yeah, that was that was a stretch. Hold on, 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 hold on. Let's see if I can give you a college. Show. I'm gonna go one of two. It was the school in Michigan, or it was. Or it was in Pennsylvania. That, Neither. I, I need an answer. You can't give me one or or. Oh, 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 oh. So that means I'm on to something. That means I'm on to something. If, if you said I can't give you or. So I'm going to say. I, I want to say he was like a late pick. Like you almost didn't get drafted type pick. So six round type stuff. Probably out of like Eastern Michigan. 
2001 NFL Draft, round seven, pick 202 from Michigan State. Oh! (laughs) 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 Like, when he first said Michigan, my face was like, like, of course, of course you got it. Of course you got Michigan. Oh, dang, I should have just stayed with my. I just, I, I just want to get the state right. But dang, so I, yeah, I would have went with Eastern or Western Michigan. Turns out it was Michigan State. That's what's up. Um, Tell me what number you wore in Miami. Twenty eight, twenty six. Uh close. Twenty four. Twenty four. All right, so dig. So Ronaldo Hill. Defensive back, used to play in Miami, wasn't like a huge contributor, nothing like that. I want to say he played from 2000. Now, this part I kind of knew from just recency bias. Was it 2006 to 2009? 2008? Essentially, 2006 to 2008. All right. So he he played DB, and in essence, he was a special teamer. Um, Ended up moving around a lot. And once he went to coaching, he had a couple colleges, I think he went to first. And his first professional coaching job was with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, nope. Not too long ago, like five years nope. ago, I want to say. Nope, 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 nope. His first professional uh, coach coaching gig wasn't with the Dolphins? No. Who was it with? Pittsburgh Steelers. What year was that? Uh, 2015. Okay, all right, my bad. Sorry about that. So then he came to the Dolphins in, in what, late, late 1920? 2018. Like 2018, 2018 comes to the Dolphins and goes to – with Vic, Vic Fangio with the Broncos, right? Yeah. And then ends up in – with the Chargers because that's where Staley is. And Staley coached under Fangio. Fangio. Um, so you could connect all the dots. It's like the coaching tree. You know how you got the – the Belichick coaching tree, the the um, what's that guy's name? It Belichick Shana- coaching tree, Shanahan you, coaching tree. You said Belichick oh. twice, but yeah, it's fine. I said I said Belichick twice. You said Belichick first, and then he said what's that guy's name, and then said Belichick again. Oh, I then thought I said it. Parcells first. No, you didn't. No. All right, so I meant to say Parcells coaching tree, Belichick coaching tree, Shanahan coaching tree. Those are. You, you, those are pretty known, right? So then the Fangio coaching tree apparently is is Staley. Staley is the head coach of the Chargers, and Ronaldo Hill was the defensive coordinator in L.A. But Pete, Fangio comes on board with the Dolphins and says, hey, you're the first coach that I reached out to. You're the one that I want the most. I need you here in Miami. And Ronaldo Hill says, I'm packing my stuff. I'm coming, coach. Straight up. Left a defensive coordinator job. Left a he was a DC in the NFL of a team that made the playoffs, by the way, and went to Miami to be a defensive assistant, defensive pass game coordinator, basically, just an assistant under Fangio. That says a lot, Kadeem. Listen, that says two things: the Vic Fangio pool is great. That Miami bag pool is great as well. Mm-hmm. Um, people joking around saying, you know, he chose two over over on Herbert. Listen, I didn't say it, but it's out there, and you can't tell me that it's wrong. So I'm going to believe it. Um, but I, I don't know. There's something about this hire which gets me excited. Um, we obviously saw what the Chargers done to the Dolphins. Um, season just gone, and that. Defensive um game was quite impressive um in my opinion. I think that listen, Fanjo wants to be here for ten years. If it works out well, then ten years that's great. But we also know that it's the NFL. Big Fangio, if he has even if it's just one good year in Miami, a team is going to call him and say, "Hey, come be our um come be our head coach," and. Best case scenario is that the Dolphins defense plays so amazing that Vic Fangio is, you know, among the cycle, the coaching cycle hires over the next few years. And Hill is someone with, you know, DC experience. And 
I feel like the Dolphins have a ready-made DC replacement in case Fangio leaves for a better not for a better opportunity simply because the defense plays so well. And I think it's something which I, not, not many fans probably care about this. Um, I remember chatting to a few. I remember chatting to Dougley Duong um, when we hired Fangio and saying that he also wanted Sean Desai as well to kind of like come and, you know, learn under Fangio and then take over and stuff like that. Um, obviously, that's not... Like, the Dolphins haven't hired Hill to replace Fangio in two, three years. But I like the idea of they are making sure that this coaching staff at all levels is very, very strong. And that if for whatever reason people move on due to the success of the team, it's not about trying to poach someone from another team. It's like, okay, cool. Next man up. You know the system. You know the players. Let's go. So let's give you a, a realistic example. And I say realistic because this is where we at on Go Time Dolphins. The Dolphins win the Super Bowl. And they look good doing it. The defense is, is incredible. Turns out the defense is, is the thing that got us over the hump. And the NFL says, yo, Fangio is still a a thing we want to we want to we want to um put them put them put them back out there on the coaching cycle like Kadeem just said maybe he doesn't get a job the first go round right because I he's older he wasn't that good of a head coach when he was the head coach maybe he's just a DC but then the Dolphins go back to back it's, it's go time Dolphins Let's, just 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 follow me Dolphins go back to back right because the only time we ever won another Super Bowl, we went back to back. So we we just a back to back franchise. So we go back to back, and now the NFL's like, "Yo, we're we're going to get Fangio. Look how good that defense is. They won two Super Bowls back to back. Defense was the top ten, top five defense. I'm taking Fangio, and then the Jets. It's go time, Dolphin. Let's just do it. So the Jets say, "Hey, Salah, you're out of here." You didn't have a quarterback, but we can't go with you no more. And Fangio goes to coach the Jets. Realistically, you would assume, or you can you can have the idea that Fangio says, hey, Ronaldo Hill, come be my DC now, right? But because Ronaldo Hill has been on the Dolphins that won two Super Bowls under, you know, Fangio as a DC, defensive coordinator, the Dolphins are in the place to say, hey, Ronaldo Hill, you can go be DC with Fangio in New York because that's your boy, or you can just stay here and be D.C. with us and try to get us to our third championship, and you get paid like a D.C., more than whatever he's giving you. You know what I'm saying? So why not? You feel me? So, yeah, that's that's what we are. Um, I think it, I thought it was – I think because Staley calls the plays as a, as a head coach because he's a defensive guy, he calls the defensive plays. I think that might be why Hill said, look, I'm I'm not a play caller here. I'm just I just have the title of DC. I want to go where somewhere where it could fast track my career. Do you get a fast track career under Fangio not being a DC? I don't know. But something tells me you're not leaving a defensive coordinator job to go be a defensive assist a defensive assistant in Miami if you don't have like idea of how things can go for you i think i think also in like being realistic you know all jokes aside and stuff there were rumblings that staley's job is kind of under pressure and he could just be like you know what i'm not sticking around to lose my job next october november Mm -hmm. and then i don't know where i end up going to miami probably better long term because banjo's job is not under the hot seat um and you know like you said, I actually might be able to become DC, you know, if not Miami, elsewhere. Because if because if this if this defense does amazing, if this you know pass defense is elite, people will go, hey, the Chargers defense was actually pretty good and had a lot of injuries. This Miami defense is very very good. This guy was on was on you know both offs. Let's see if he can get somewhere. So, yeah, it's um. Definitely want to look out for. No, that was that was that was a, a good assessment right there, Kadeem. There ain't no there ain't no telling what Staley got going on. Um, but yeah, I like it. Have you ever had a pedicure, Kadeem? No, me and Hannah Montana kind of 
talk about it, say, hey, we should go get couples, you know, Manny Petty and stuff like that. Like, my dad gets it with my mum. Um, you know, there you go, get a Manny Petty. I never got either, but it's, it's, oh, it's one of the things I might do. So you would, would you, all right, you might do it. So you would get a manicure too? No, no, just like do the cuticles and stuff and, you know, just make my nails look pretty. Listen, I'm on YouTube. My nails should be elite, you know. You never know what people are going to type in the comments. Hey, look at that guy's nails. They're dusty. Like, yo, like, leave this me guy. alone. This guy. All right. So, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't get no manicure, but, hey, to each his own. But I do get pedicures now, Kadeem, because, you know, I'm in jujitsu classes now. You feel me? I got my feet can't be all ashy and and crazy and cutting people on the mat. You know what I'm saying? I gotta take care of I gotta take care of my feet, bro. I got all kind of lotion. I got I ain't never had this much lotion in my life. I gotta make sure I'm good when I'm rolling. You know what I'm saying? Um, but now that's I was just asking because I just got this pedicure. And I felt like I was walking on a cloud, bro. I'm like, oh man, this is. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it was everything, man. Like I know, I know. Um, I told this uh, one of my bosses way back in the day. I'm like, yeah, man, I just had a, and it, I was wearing metal tarsals. Do you know what? I actually kind of gave it away. You know what metal tarsals are? I know what the like part of the body the metal tarsal is, but if it's something outside of, like, if it's a shoe, then I have no idea. Right. So m- there, there are metatarsals and metacarpals. Metacarpals are the small bones right, right here in your hand. Those are called metacarpals. And your feet have similar on the top. Well, I was going to show it. But <laughs> I was about to show it. I was about to show it. I was about to show I've already seen you without a shirt. I don't need to see your toes. <laughs> listen, listen, next year in Cyprus, do what you got to do. Go time dolphins. No. Yeah, oh, by the way, so, we so should record I, very, very, very quickly. We have to record a go time dolphins episode in Cyprus. And we, I like it. Uh, around the world, across the world, like for sure. Have to be. For sure. So, metal, your metacarpals are, are on your foot, the large part of your foot. All right. Um, so, there's boots that, that are considered metacarpals. I mean, metatarsals. My fault. Metatarsals. And they're they're like steel toe boots with an extra piece of steel that cover your metatarsals. So, anyway, yeah, man, I, 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 was, I was on a job. I walked like four, five, six, seven miles. It was a lot uh, a day in my metatarsals. I'm like, nah, bro. I got to take care of my dogs, and uh, that's when I got a pedicure. But hey, we about to get into bonus time, man. You want to give it a shot, Kadeem? Live show. I'm not giving away the goods for free. Live show. That's all I'm saying. Y'all know what time it is. Stay positive. Test negative. For Kadeem Simmons, I'm Charlie Touche. Thank you for tuning in this time. Make sure you catch us next time on Go Time. Already. <laughs> Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time And it's your time Going all out when it's go time I ain't wasting no time Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time Cause it's your time Lay it on the line when it's go time Don't waste no time Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time And it's your time Going all out when it's go time I have two topics I kind of want to discuss, but before we delve into what I'll ask you which one you'll talk about before we delve into one. So at the very end of the last episode, we, I can't even say spoiler, but we announced what the next Go Time Dolphin giveaway is. And we said, if you're still here, you're still listening, Type in first. You heard it. You, you know. You you heard it here first. We appreciate you. Um, we're not gonna do that at the very end of the episode. We'll we know we'll do it now. Um, am I okay to pass it over to you to do the honors of telling everyone what the next Go Time Dolphins giveaway is? Yeah, man. I mean, we said on the last episode, and that's why you got to stick around to the end. Like, oh my goodness, we we they, they these boys gave it away at the end of the last episode. So we're giving away a pair of game worn javon holland gloves shout out to the snowman we appreciate you for rocking with go time dolphins and just just gave us some stuff to give away on the podcast and we appreciate you for real for real bro 
Um, Snowman, y'all know what time it is. Game one, Javon Han gloves, giving it away on our we're gonna have a live episode, first time going live ever on Go Time Dolphins. So we were like, you know what? Let's do it real big. Guys, I want to say you heard it here first, but people heard it first on the other episode. So <laughs> <laughs> like it, it is what it is. Um two things I want to discuss. Um don't have to discuss both things. One is it's not Dolphins related, but it's coaching related. It's Eric Bieniemy leaving the Chiefs to go to Washington, and I guess your thoughts behind that. Um, the other one is the growing rumor slash speculation that Saquon Barkley is going to hit free agency. What would you rather talk about today? So, are we only talking about one? Is that is that what you're saying? I, I guess we could talk about both, but I, I mean, I, I could really get, I could, I could, we could give him Eric B enemy real quick and move on to Saquon. Cause really I think Eric B enemy is, I'm not getting enough credit here in KC. Um, everybody thinks Andy Reed is, is the reason why we're successful here on offense. Andy Reed and Patrick Mahomes. Right. Um, but if you look at everyone else that came, that was OC of KC, uh, Doug Peterson, he he became a head coach. What's your boy that went to um Chicago? I forgot his name, but he 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 um he fell. Oh, he was not. Um, he was he was a Chicago Bears head. Co- Did it start with a T T R something like I don't know. I don't remember. But he went to Chicago. He was the head coach. He was the OC at KC, and he didn't work out. But he was still an OC in KC. Uh, Peterson OC in KC, and they both got head jobs. So now. Here goes Matt, Eric B- Matt Nagy. Oh, Matt Nagy. I said TR. I don't know where that came from. But yeah, Matt Nagy was OC in KC. He got a job. So now Eric B enemy, like, yo, I'm OC in KC and I got a couple championships, but I didn't get a, a head coaching job. We don't know what, what's going on. I'm not just gonna go straight to race. You know what I'm saying? It could be because he doesn't interview well. We don't know, right? But as if I'm Eric B enemy and you know he got all these college jobs asking, oh, you want to be a coach of college? It's like, damn, bro, I'm not trying to go backwards. You know what I'm saying? So I think this was a move where it was like, look, I love y'all, but I'm still trying to become a head coach. Now, what I can do is go to a different team and we're successful wherever I go, then it'll be all right. You know what? He is a good OC. Let's give him a head coach position. So I think that's why he went to take another job. I don't think it's nothing, nothing to do with no bad blood or nothing like that. Yeah, no, the reason I asked is because I think, you know, there were a lot of people who were kind of saying essentially what you just said. There's other, you know, assistants not just in in Kansas City just across the league who essentially haven't had to go elsewhere to prove themselves it's like hey this guy's doing good work in this team we want to hire that person as a head coach cool in my opinion this could be a whole episode you know is it race related there's been a lot of people over the past years say hey the enemy doesn't interview well that's being kind of shut down by the Chiefs. Like, listen, the interview's great. Like, we don't know what you're on about. But, again, it'll be interesting to see how he does in Washington. I might have thought I'd, I'd get your opinion on it. It's something which, you know, if we spoke over WhatsApp, you know, that could probably be a whole long conversation. But if I was like, hey, what did you think of this? You would have said, podcast. So, podcast it is. Um, yeah, I, 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 I mean, we, we'll find out. Uh, yeah, and exactly. it's, it's cool that he went to the NFC because now I could kind of root for him. But, like, yo, bro, I hope you do well over there, but just get out of our way. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But you, you, you mentioned Saquon Barkley might 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 hit free agency. Now, let's break down what, what's going on with Saquon Barkley and Danny Nichols. The Giants are talking about tagging one of them and signing the other one. If you tag Danny Nichols, then you can sign Saquon Barkley. If you tag Saquon Barkley, then you can sign Danny Nichols. I was thinking about this today, Kadeen. So it's funny that you brought this up because, you know, we don't really talk like that about what we're going to talk about on the podcast. But if I'm the Giants, I'm like, bro, there's no way I'm going to give Danny Nichols an extended 35 plus million dollars for the next four or five, six years. It's not going to happen. If, if I'm the Giants, I'm not doing that. I, I need to see it one more time from Danny Nichols. You see what I'm saying? 
And then what's the tag number for quarterbacks this year? Isn't it like forty million dollars? I'll double check. Yeah. So while you get the numbers, it could be. I know it's upwards of thirty-five million dollars. So do I believe? Do I really want to allocate thirty-five million dollars to Danny Nichols for one season just to see? All right. Well, let's see if he could do it again. Right. So, or do I want to give Saquon Barkley eight million dollars? I don't know. Like, I might want to give Saquon Barkley eight million dollars a year and then sign Danny Nichols to something small. Like Danny Nichols, you you hit the market. You think you, you think they're coming for you? You think they're coming for Danny Nichols, Kadeem? So before I answer that question, uh NFL franchise tag value for 2023, quarterback is 32 million, running back is 10 million. Cool. I'm not paying Danny Nichols. Thirty-two million dollars to see if you you could do it again. I I'm, I don't trust dog. So now, what if I were the Giants? I will tag Saquon to see if he could do it again and stay healthy again. And then I already told you I was I was going to do that if he ended up as a Dolphin. And all right, well now you could walk after that. You see what I'm saying? So they got themselves in a little conundrum, and it's not a good conundrum either. Like you're you're flirting with Danny Nichols. Like, I, that's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to flip with Danny Nichols. So, yeah, man, if Saquon Barkley, and I, I, I'm, I'm guessing this is why you asked, because the Dolphins can entertain the possibility of Danny Dimes or Danny, Daniel Jones, we just call him his real names. Daniel Jones gets tagged by the Giants because it's more important to tag a, a quarterback to see if he's going to be the franchise or not. Okay, whatever. Y'all figure that out. But then they let, Saquon walk or not just walk, but hit the market, right? They still might re-sign Saquon, but he'll hit the market. <clears throat> I got a magic Kadeem. Saquon's going to demand more than $10 million a year. You interested? More than $10 million a year? No. Um, Barkley is, he he's a very good back. And when he's healthy, he looks untouchable. It's the when it's off, he's bit, and it's like, yo, like, obviously, any player can pick up an injury and be done for the season. Completely understand that. I feel like with Saquon Barkley, it's more likely he's going to get injured at some point. And I'm of the belief you don't pay running backs, don't pay them a lot of money anyway. So I'm not looking to pay Saquon Barkley a lot of money. Say it's say it's 13 million. Take on Barkley ends up in Miami for 13 million. Realistically, the Dolphins could probably have four running backs for 13 million. And okay, you know, one all four running backs individually might not be good as Saquon Barkley, but give me four running backs for 30 million, maybe even less if you do it, if you do it correctly, you know, you bring back Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson, you draft one and you pick up a vet. I don't, I'm not going to say any names, but no, I'd rather allocate 10 million plus to an offensive lineman, maybe even a corner, maybe even a linebacker. Um, And yeah, not entertain Saquon Barkley. So, Excluding Alec Ingold, I believe the Dolphins paid their running backs twelve and a half million total. Last year, uh, we had Chase Edmonds at seven million or seven and a half. Then we had Miles Gaskin, friend of the podcast, 40, 40 acres in a Hellcat, came in at over two million. I think it was like two and a half. Then we had another two, I think, for uh, Savon Ahmed. Then we had Raheem Mostert on one. Then we acquired Jeff Wilson Jr. And it's crazy, Kadeem, because this year, if we paid our running backs $12.5 million last year, imagine keeping Jeff Wilson Jr. and Raheem Mostert this year coming in under $6 million total. So we could cut half the cost we spent on running back, the run, whole running back room last year, coming in under $6 million total this year. And I think that's a real possibility because we're going to be up against the cap. Um Am I not spending money on the running back? I don't care to, but I'm not opposed. It. I'm not like, I'm never, ever, ever. Well, Charlie Touche is never, ever, ever spending money on a running back. But I'm not against it. I wouldn't even have traded that 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 
Devonte Adams straight. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't. That was too much for me. And again, the Tyreek Hill was a lot for me. But again, I said, yo, I'm with it. Cool. We did it. I would have done it. We did it. I love it. You feel me? So I'm looking at the top five running backs um, salary according to Spotrack, and CMC comes in at 12 million. Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, and Aaron Jones come in at 11 million apiece. And then Ezekiel Elliott, for whatever reason, he's getting 10 9. So I said Saquon will come in at about 10. Let's just for conversation's sake say says he comes in over eight. Does that do that? Does it do it for you? Eight million do it for you? So for example, Chase Edmonds got seven and a half, two year deal, first year guaranteed. Second year was not guaranteed. So that was the Jordan Howard contract, the Malcolm Brown contract. If you remember these boys that the Dolphins did, it was the same template. Look, we're going to pay you for a two-year deal, but only the first year would be guaranteed. If you're Saquon Barkley, he's not going for that. So I imagine we would have to treat Saquon a little different and say, okay, Saquon, we'll give you a three-year deal, but the first two are guaranteed. So let's just call it for the sake of the Go Time Dolphins podcast. He comes in at eight and a half, nine million dollars for two years, guaranteed, and the third year is optional. Do you pay Saquon Barkley nine million dollars for two seasons, guaranteed? No, I, I'm, I'd be tempted to, mm-hmm. but we're up against the cap. I still think we are. Multiple positions, not multiple positions away, but we have a few too many positions, in my opinion, which need significant work. Like, again, we essentially don't have a tight end right now. <laughs> like, we can find cheap running backs, and I guess you can find a cheap tight end. But like you said, we can bring back half of the running back room from last year for less than six million if we work it well. If let's, you know, let's allocate money to tight end linebacker corner offensive line in my opinion all right i'm gonna answer the question because i made you answer the question if it's saquon barkley for nine million dollars for two years guaranteed i'm gonna say yes i'm not gonna love it though same way i didn't love the compensation we had to give up for tyreek hill and pay him 30 million dollars a year i didn't love that either but it worked out. I like, ah, oh, this is working. You know what I'm saying? But I don't love it. I have to say this first. Before I pay Saquon Barkley upwards of $9 million a season, I need to know what David Montgomery's coming in at. What's David Montgomery's price? What's Josh Jacobs' price? You know what I'm saying? What are those prices before I pay Saquon this, this, this bag? And then... We we could we could have that conversation, but on face value, yeah, I would do it. But yo, we got we got to figure this out because I'm not trying to. I don't know if Saquon is going to be open to nine million dollars a year. Um, but it would be nice to have a running back. It would. And one last thing for me because I saw this on social media. I have to ask you: You bringing in Mars Sanders? Absolutely not. <laughs> Bro, like <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I promise very quickly. I promise you, someone on social media was arguing for the Dolphins to bring in Mar Sanders because of what he done in Philadelphia. And I, I again, I didn't get involved in the conversation, but I was in my head. I was thinking, you're not watching football because Mar Sanders. Listen, me who has never played a snap of football in my life, I can run behind the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line. I'll probably get concussed the moment someone touches me, but I can at least get three or four yards before someone touches me. That's how good that, that offensive line is. Mars Sanders, listen, I don't care if we get him in for a bag of Doritos, some Skittles and some Jujubes. Nah, not doing it. <laughs> Bro, I, every year in fantasy football, um, we have the, like, Burt picks up Miles Sanders. I'm like, Burt, no one, you, you could have let Miles Sanders fall to you in, in round 12. No one's ever touching Miles Sanders, bro. You can have him. You know what I'm saying? And he always takes him early. I'm like, bro, I'm good for you. And then he'll try to trade him during the season. I'm like, Bert, I don't want Miles Sanders, bro. 
I don't trust Miles Sanders. So yeah, and this is this is the 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 me and Sherry Steve conversation. Bro, when you got the number one offensive line, it doesn't matter who your running back is, i.e. Miles Sanders. You know what I'm saying? And Miles Sanders looks decent, but nah, I'm I'm straight. I'm passing on Miles Sanders homes. 